Welcome, every single one of you, to Eric and Sheila's Ketuba signing. I am Cantor Mark Backrack, and I want to welcome every one of you here. This is very exciting. Our Jewish ceremonies contain the richness and the power of our tribal rituals, of our chants, and our blessings. There are generations of symbolism and ancient wisdom in this ceremony. Now, the word ketubah, ketubah means agreement. And ketubah comes from the Hebrew word for writing or that which is written. The ketubah represents the commitments of your hearts, Eric and Sheila. It visibly displays your love for each other. Sheila, Eric, your ketubah is more than just a contract. This beautiful ketubah in front of you is your brit ahuva, that's Hebrew for covenant of love. You chose a beautiful ketubah. What drew you to this one? The decor. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. Function and form. One simple answer. And it smells good because you'll notice they're eucalyptus leaves on this. So if you use your imagination, it even not only is a beautiful, tasteful ketubah, but it also smells nice. Now, the interesting thing about this ketubah with its leaves is that the leaves hint at one of our great symbols in Judaism, and that is the Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, because there's no leaves without a tree. Is that right, folks? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. We're still here, right? Everybody's awake? <laughs> now, the tree of life is central to Jewish theology, mysticism, and prayer. The trunk, the trunk of a tree. Can you guys see me? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. The trunk of a tree, okay, that's that's easy. The limbs and the branches, these we can see easily, yes? We yes. can see the easily. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you're, you're coming on the road after this, all right. Where do you see the ceremony? You have big, big part today. The, uh, the, we, don't, we know that those are there, but the roots, right, the roots of the tree, we know the roots of the tree are there, but we can't see them. We can't see them. Well, today, Eric, Sheila, you together are the trunk of your tree, and God willing, your parents thrilling, your children will be the limbs and the branches of your tree. And the tree is very excited. Did you notice that? They, I said parents thrilling. And it, Tomorrow, I will plant three trees in Israel in your honor to honor your new family tree. Thank you, Lisa Mitzvah, for me to do this. And that family tree and these trees will grow as your family does. Am Yisrael Chai, this is the memory I wish to now attach in your minds to this time. In the darkest of hours, we're called upon to shine the brightest of lights, celebrate our symptoms with all our power, all our love, and plant seeds for the future which we envision. Your tree, however, did not start today. Eric. Sheila, your Eitz Chaim, your tree of life, it started thousands of years ago. Those families, thousands of years ago, were busy with their own lives. They were building their own families in the cities and the villages of Norway and Iran. And we may not see the deep roots of your tree here, yet all of us recognize that all of these ancestors are with us now, in your DNA, in your hearts, and in your souls. These spirits are one with the Holy Spirit, the, the Ruach HaKadosh. So let's take just a brief moment to honor these souls, to acknowledge all their contributions, and welcome their sacred presence to your ketubah signing and later to your chobah. So if you will, we're going to give special honor and attention to Sheila's grandparents, Ellis Nosratula and her aunt Ziba, and to Eric's grandparents, Alan, Ramona, Sam, and Lois, and his aunt Trudy. Everyone here, please close your eyes. And welcome in through your heart, your heart's eyes, while your eyes are closed. Welcome in your memories, the joy, the delight of all these ancestors, the ones that you know, the relatives you never met, celebrating this beautiful Kiddushin, this wonderful marriage. As we remember each one of them with love, I sing one Hebrew word, ruach, which means spirit. Ruach, Ruach, Ruach. And now we're all here.
here together. Open your eyes. Let's celebrate together with them. Let's open our eyes now and watch, because watch closely. Something very special is about to happen. A new family is being born. Now, many of you know that Jews are known as the people of the book. So today, we add a new book to our people's library. Yes, yeah. the book of Eric and Sheila. Now, please indulge me. As I share excerpts from chapters 1 through 3, The Journey to the Chuppah. Our love story begins where all great 21st century fairy tales begin. When boy sees girl, she's beautiful, and she swipes right. <laughs> Bumble. Not the bee, but the internet dating system. Right there. <sighs> The little door. <laughs> little door. Little door. The most romantic restaurant in Los Angeles. A charming little brasserie. Oh, so charming. <sighs> Almost eight years ago, Sheila spots Eric first, sitting on the sidewalk. A sight that makes her sigh in relief. And perhaps it's his easy smile or his attentive eyes, but something tells her, thank God. Eric is taken by Sheila's elegance, her wit, her beauty. It's her lighthearted <laughs> sense of humor and empathy that really stands out to him. He thinks, this is someone special. I'd like to spend time with her. I'd like to enjoy her company. So they sit down to a delicious meal, enjoying the Parisian-style ambience of the place. <laughs> Sheila's laughter rings out every so often, and Eric finds himself more and more drawn to her. Meanwhile, Sheila appreciates Eric's thoughtful conversation and gentle manner. Well, as they share a glass of Sancerre after dinner, she playfully asks Eric, if she has anything stuck in her teeth. A question that makes both of them chuckle. <laughs> Eric feels a strong urge to lean over and kiss Sheila goodnight, but being the gentleman that he is, <laughs> he decides to call it and wait for another night. Well, they date for three months after that night, but then life takes them on different paths. Yet Eric never quite leaves Sheila's mind, and she does not leave his. Fast forward, two and a half years ago, Eric and Sheila reconnect. They pick up right where they left off. The connection is still there and it's stronger than ever. They start dating again and the rest, as Sheila puts it, is history. On now to the picturesque Santa Inez Valley. <laughs> Eric and Sheila are on one of their many cowboys and vineyards trips. <sighs> this time, there's an undercurrent of excitement for Eric. He's decided to take their relationship to the next level. His initial plan to propose at one of their favorite vineyards somehow doesn't feel quite right. And one morning, they're nestled on the private balcony of their hotel room, and Eric, fresh out of the shower, sports a robe and cargo pants. While Sheila sits cozily in her pajamas, cradling Gustav in her lap. The tranquility of the region mirrors the peace Sheila brings Eric. The casual intimacy of their morning ritual feels just right. And suddenly, Eric feels a magnetic pull toward Sheila. He goes with it, and he <laughs> finds himself getting down on one knee in front of her. Uh, no, he doesn't have a ring, but he doesn't need one right now. Words tumble out of Eric's mouth. I love you very much, I don't have a ring, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> Sheila, caught off guard, looks at him with wide eyes. She manages to stammer out, are you serious? <laughs> Sheila doesn't exactly say yes, but the look in her eyes speaks volumes. 
And right before this moment, she remembers thinking what a perfect day it was. Her dog in her lap, Eric across from her, the beautiful weather, the trees standing tall around them. Little did she know, this perfect day would turn into the one of the most memorable moments of their lives. And so, here we are in the boardroom of the Peninsula Hotel doing a Ketuba signing today. The blonde bearded Viking <laughs> and the short dark haired girl at the party talking to everyone and making every one of them laugh. <laughs> He's the one person she's never felt any anxiety with. The one person who lets her be herself. And she is the perfect woman to traverse the journey of life and build family roots with. And she always has his back. So begins the sacred book of Eric and Sheila, the light, the flame, the flame of love, the heat. I'll tell you, anyone who reads this book, they see it for themselves. The heat, the light, the flame, the passion. You can read it right here for yourself. What's the problem? It's on fire! license, but really, it was very close to a purchase document. Purchase. Now, now, come on. Clearly, clearly, we know Eric here is not purchasing Sheila today, right? No, he is! <laughs> well, there's always one exception. <laughs> even though that purchase, even though that purchase would be what? The deal of the century! <laughs> Such a deal! Priceless! He's an old man! <laughs> He's an old man after all. He's an old man after all. I love you, my love you, love you. Tell me your name. Yes, good, okay, great. But that's ancient history. What is this Ketuba that we're looking at all about? This beautiful, yes, ketubah, just like that. This beautiful ketubah is a promise. It's a promise you make to each other. It's a promise you make to your families. It's a promise you make to your communities. And a promise you make to your ancestors. A promise about the home you build, the future you shape, the life that you share together. And they make this promise. And they make this pledge to one another. Be my wife. Be my husband according to the traditions and the wisdom of Moses and Israel, I promise, I pledge to you, I will care for you, I will support you, I will protect you in the way that husbands and wives who are caring and supportive of one another, in wholeness and in truth, live in harmony, in peace, in shalom habayat. This is a binding and a valid agreement amongst the people of Israel, not just the country Israel, but the Jewish people worldwide. Eric, do you understand the meaning of this promise? I do. And are you prepared to make this promise to Sheila? I do. And do you pledge yourself and all that is yours to its fulfillment? I do. All right. And in the presence of these witnesses, Eric, place your hands on the left side of the document. Eric, you are almost a married man. <laughs> Sheila. Do you want uh, this way, Sheila? Okay. Do you understand the meaning of the promise and are prepared to make this promise to Eric? I do. And do you pledge yourself all it is to your his fulfillment and its fulfillment? Yes, I do. Then do the same thing he did on the right side. You are almost a married woman. Eric, son of Lauren and Diane. Sheila, 
daughter of Rosie and Donnie. We're going to have you sign first because the witnesses are witnessing your signatures. Makes sense, right? That simple sign. And then I'm going to sign. Full disclosure, I already signed because I want to make sure this moves right along. We have to get back out there. And I'm going to talk to Mark and Rob at this moment. Mark, Rob, would you stand, please? Come forward. Gentlemen, I want to make sure that you understand over here. Look at me. Thank you very much. I want you to make sure that you understand your responsibilities. You are not just witnessing a document signing. And you're not just witnessing a wedding. You're witnessing a marriage. And this job does not end today. This new job begins right here and right now. It's your job to check in with Sheila and Eric periodically to encourage them, to support them as they fulfill these ketubah vows, to ask them, is there anything you need? And then the tough part, to do it if it's humanly possible. Are you willing to fulfill these responsibilities? I am. Right. Very much so. Then please, after you sign, as, as one of you signs, I want the other one to whisper into the ear of the person that you're representing a blessing, a joke, I love you, whatever you want, but something intimate between the two of you, encouraging them on their way. My daughter corrected my nun so feet this morning, so everyone should know that there are kids involved in this signing. <laughs> Whisper something into Eric's ear. It's okay, you can get close. And her too? No. No. <laughs> you don't get that much, Rob. <laughs> right, Samantha? There we go. of you for the most important qualities you value, the values you intend to become the foundation of your marriage. You shared these with me, honesty, love, loyalty, family, laughter, commitment, dedication, communication, empathy, support, friendship, peace, kindness. With these clear values and these intentions as the foundation for your marriage, I invite the two of you now to read aloud your ketubah vows together so all may hear. Surrounded by family and friends and witnessed by God, we affirm our commitment to each other. Our lives shall, shall be forever entwined. Each day we will strive to deepen our relationship, to listen compassionately, and to accept and understand one another. We will unite our shared values, for they will strengthen us. We will honor our differences, for they will enrich us. Our family will practice customs rooted in the traditions of each of our ancestors. Yet we will leave space in our lives for new customs created from our shared experiences. Our home will be a place of warmth, generosity, and most of all love. These things we promise each other as we joyfully commit ourselves as husband and wife. You are my best friend, my hopes and future, my strength, and my soulmate. Standing proudly beside you, in your eyes I see my love. And in your heart I see my love. And in our promises I see a union, true and steadfast, uniquely devoted to compassion, <coughs> kindness, and sincerity. Through all time and space, there has been no love like ours, and our story will unfold with beauty, grace, and beauty. We willingly we enter, enter into this covenant of companionship and love from this day forward. We are as one. May my heart be your shelter and my arms be your home. Our sacred covenant is valid and binding. Our commitment to each other seals this document. Okay. 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 Okay.
This ketubah has been witnessed and signed according to our tradition. But all this is now valid and binding. Your wedding anniversary, April 7th, is now your own personal, unique holiday. And each year on your anniversary, we live today's joy and celebration. Stand together in front of your kachuba on the wall of your home. Take each other's hands and hold them as you did under your chuppah today. And renew these promises to one another. Read them aloud again, slowly, patiently. Explore these promises with each other. Where did you succeed on acting on them? And where did you fall short? And share how each of you can improve their fulfillment. And then finish with a long hug and a kiss, and perhaps a bottle of wine or two, whatever is your, your custom at that point. Sheila and Eric, I offer you this simple gift now to enrich your marriage. It is a DIY human deck. Yes, uh, for those of you who don't speak acronym, DIY means do-it-yourself human. It's a kit for being human, <laughs> and it's called Cards That Start the Conversation You've Never Had. It's not Cards Against Humanity. I know some of you oh, what are you doing? We can't remember. You may end up talking for hours on just one of these cards. They are very, very powerful, so I hope that you'll use them on whenever you can. Thank you. Now, uh, as my blessed mother would say to you with a huge smile, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> your wedding ceremony under the hope in just a few minutes will be a continuation of your celebration and equally happy and joyful moment. So congratulations, because this calls for your first ceremonial kiss of the wedding festivity. <laughs> You are now sort of kind of joined together in the Jewish tradition. And if the rest of the ceremony wasn't to happen, God forbid, <laughs> you'll get a translation from somebody. <laughs> there is an argument you'd be united already. So, everyone, thank you so much. What we're going to do right now is we will split the difference and give you, Eric and Sheila, a half muscle tone. Now, I'm swearing you all the secrecy. You can't let this leave the room. It stays with you, all right? I'm going to teach you the ancient tribal ritual of the half mazel tov. And we'll wait for the real one when you break the glass, all right? Follow closely. The half mazel tov is executed faithfully and spiritually with the sound of one hand clapping and <laughs> half of a mazel tov or mazel. All right, practice in your mind now. This is difficult. Here's how it goes. It goes, Mazel. Okay, Mazel. on the three. A one, a two, a three. Mazel! Mazel. Meanwhile, L'chaim to life! Mazel.